Hi, welcome to the SpectraFoo tutorial. This should help you get up and running quickly with SpectraFoo. Let's start off by looking at the main preferences. Here you can set the panel color, highlight tints, and background color that your instruments will have. For the real-time rack, you can select whether or not it has the brushed metal appearance. Your individual instrument windows can have frames like a finder window or not. Not using the frames tends to give you a few more instruments on screen because it saves some real estate. You can set what font Foo uses, how it reacts to clicks. You can select whether or not Spectra Foo uses 64-bit analyzers, which, while more accurate, need a little bit more CPU power. But for the most part, on anything G4 or newer, you should be fine. You can select whether all windows will come to the front if one is clicked, or just that individual window that you clicked on. SpectraFoo has several floating control windows. Here you can set whether or not they always float on top of everything, or if they can be sent to the back. If you have a machine with OpenGL acceleration, you can enable it here. Some instruments have cursors that show you additional information. Here you can set whether or not they will always track the mouse position, or if they only track when you hold down one of the cursor keys. SpectraFoo uses a grid to help you align your instruments, and here you can set the horizontal and vertical pixel values for that grid sizing. Here you can select whether or not you will automatically be prompted to name your delay finder windows. This really only comes into play once we start looking at the transfer function. Here you can select whether or not SpectraFoo will automatically change the sample rate of its audio captures to match the hardware sample rate. For now, let's leave that on. Next we're going to pick an audio interface to use with SpectraFoo. And we do that by going to the Audio I.O. menu and Configure Hardware. Here you can see all of the devices available on my computer for SpectraFoo to use. Here you can set the sample rate. And keep in mind that the faster you run the device in SpectraFoo, the faster SpectraFoo will actually be able to analyze. So if you can run at 96 kHz, it's a good idea. Here you can set the buffer size for SpectraFoo's audio input. Something to keep in mind is that unlike most digital audio workstations, you don't want to set this number too low. So, in general, you can start off around 1024 or maybe 512, especially if you're running at a high sample rate. Also here, you can set whether or not SpectraFoo will allow you to monitor your input through your output device. Next, we're going to set the analyzer depth for SpectraFoo. This is done by going to the Analyzer menu. You can see that you have a choice from 1024 to 64,000 points of data, and the gap in hertz between those points. Keep in mind that the higher the number of points, the more accurate SpectraFoo's display will be, but the more points, the higher the CPU load on your computer. For right now, let's leave this at 16,000. The last thing that we need to look at is the routing window. Here, you can set the number of analysis channels for SpectraFoo between 1 and 24. If you were using a multi-channel interface, this is where you would select which channels of your interface go to which channels of the analyzer. Now, we're finally ready to start looking at some audio. To start working with instruments, we need the master control window. You can get that from the window menu or by using Command-M. So to start, let's get a level meter. And to do that, we just click on the plus sign. And there is a level meter. I can move this anywhere in my workspace that I would like. I can make it bigger. Or I can make it smaller. Or in the case of the level meter, I can actually drag this way and change its orientation. Now as I move this around and drop it, if it looks like the instrument jumps a little bit, that's because of the grid and that'll become very handy in a moment. So for right now, I would like to have this instrument tight to the menu bar, and I'm gonna make that pretty big. So now we've got a nice big level meter. 
These buttons in the lower left hand corner are common to all instruments. The green button will turn the instrument on and off. By hitting the solo button, that will solo that instrument so that only it runs. And this icon will bring up the preferences for that instrument. So now I would like to add a spectrograph, which looks like a traditional RTA. And I will put that there. Resize that. We can also take a look at its preferences. And let me turn off the peak and averaging. And that's just a shot of the noise in the room. And I would also like to add in a spectrogram. Move that there. And I'll line that up. And by option clicking there, I can change its orientation. So now I have a level meter and a spectrograph and a spectrogram. Let's look at interaction between instruments for a second. As I said before, by using the solo button, you can select just one instrument that you would like to look at at a time. Now, I have these two instruments that are both showing me frequency information. And I would like to keep those two views synchronized. But for example, I'm looking at up to 32 kilohertz since I'm running this machine at 96K, and I'd really like to trim that down. Now, I could individually go into each one of these instruments and by moving the frequency range slider take that down to about 18k but now I've got to do the same thing here and that gets kind of boring so let's use one of Spectrafoo's great features called link groups go to the sets window and show link groups window This brings up a list of available link groups. And we're going to start off with the first one. So by double clicking that, we can edit this group. Now I'm going to call this group name Frequency. And by clicking here on this arrow, I can turn off everything and only enable the parameters that I want. So I'll scroll down and select the maximum and minimum frequency. Now, by going into each one of these instruments and under group, selecting frequency, now as I make changes in one, the other will automatically stay synchronized. This allows you to make adjustments over a number of instruments by just moving one fader. So now I have my displays set up the way I want. And I have these two instruments set to track each other. Wouldn't it be great to be able to have this recalled very easily? Well, we can. If you go back to sets, and save window set as. We'll just call this my first set or first. For each window set, you can set a key command that will allow you to recall it very quickly. Make sure that you don't use a key command that conflicts with a setting within SpectraFoo. So I'm going to call this command option F. Here you can set what parameters are going to be recalled with the window set.
we'll just have it recall everything. So now if I go in and remove these instruments, I'll even close the master controls window. Command option F. There's everything I was working with recalled into the same place with the same settings. Now let's say I don't want the master control window and I'm going to use that space to get a bigger view. All I have to do is resize things the way I want. Go back to sets and say update current window set. Now that's saved. This should be enough to get you up and running so that you can start looking at audio in SpectraFoo. Next we'll start dealing with the transfer function and some of the other more advanced concepts.